Hi everyone, I've been meaning to record this video for uh, two days now and I finally got some time to put together the material needed uh, and to be able to really put my thought around how I'm going to present this to you but um, I really like animations when they're used correctly uh, and when they're not intrusive in a way that they uh, you need to change your behavior in an application to use animations um, there are some animations even in iOS and Android that um, I believe are a bit intrusive and they make me have to use um, that particular application, for instance, in a different way uh, to adjust my behavior to the animation. But I think if animations are used tastefully, then um, they're, they can be very pleasant. And uh, I thought to put this video together to explain some basics of animation animations in Flutter um, and um, since animations are a bit difficult to explain um, as an abstract topic I thought to maybe first uh, show you what we are going to achieve in this video so you get an idea of what the end product is going to look like and then we're going to go ahead and implement this um, and of course I'm going to make this application available on GitHub to uh, download for, uh, basically for you to download the source code later so let's uh, immediately jump to it um i have this application that i put together before and this is what we're going to achieve in this video as you can see um let's switch here sorry about that uh as you can see we have a card like uh, widget here which has a border and a drop shadow and a very nice uh, dash icon for Flutter, and then it says front here at the bottom. Um, and then if I tap on it, then it's gonna turn around and do an animation for us, uh, uh, revealing another card. And I can repeat this animation for you. And you can see that is very smooth front and back. Um, so that's what we're gonna achieve in this video. A smooth animation with uh, some sort of animation curve with an image and text and a card in the, in the middle that contains its image and text. So uh, one thing that we're going to define to start with uh, would be uh, what I'd like to call a face. Uh, a face is a face of this animation, a front face and a back face. So each one of these faces has its own properties. Uh, in this case, an image, a text, um, and a key. This key is very important. The key is a key, <laughs> you can say. Uh, it is very important in how Flutter understands animations. Uh, it should be kind of like a unique property for your widgets because otherwise Flutter doesn't understand which widget is what and what to switch in and what to switch out. In this case, these two, front and back, are actually two different widgets, uh, which will be basically exchanged with each other uh, using the key. The key identifies each one of these cards and um, we create a transition. We tell Flutter how long this transition is and what kind of curve it has. And then using the key, Flutter understands, okay, this is the view or the widget that's on the screen and now it's changed to another widget. So I have to display the new widget. So these three properties are going to be important for our face object so um, before we start with any of this let's clean up the project as you can see if i run um, this application which is a an empty flutter application there's lots of boilerplate code in here so i'm gonna i'm gonna get rid of all that so let's just delete all this um like that and i really like to just start with a material app um, but before that, let's create a stateful widget. And I like to do that in Visual Studio Code with STF, stateful widget. And I'm going to call it just, let's say, home page. All right. And in here, we're just going to say we're creating a material app. And um, the home is our home page, just like that. All right. I like to put commas so that it can format our application a little bit better 
So, and then I'm gonna do like this. All right, as you can see now, maybe I should also pin the simulator and the iPhone simulator on the on top. You can do that by going to window and say, stay on top. I think that's really nice when you're working with Flutter because you can just do hot reload and then the simulator is just right there. You don't have to switch between applications. Okay, that's our home page. Now, if you can live with the fact that it's black for now, let's just go and define our face, the object that we talked about a little bit earlier. For that face, if you remember, one of the properties that face had would be its image. Um, now, I prepare two images here. One is for the front and the other one is for the back. And I've called them front PNG and back PNG. All right. I'm going to go here on the top level and then create a folder like this in Visual Studio, uh, Visual Studio Code. And I'm going to call it images. And under images, I'm just going to drag these two files. Whoop just like that, all right? Then I'm gonna press Command Shift O and then go to my pop spec YAML file and I'm gonna enable these two images just like this, assets, images, and I'm just gonna call front PNG and then back PNG, all right? I'm gonna press Command S and it's gonna do a pop get, as you can see, it's busy right here and it's done its job. That's for our images. Now that thing is done, we're going to start defining our face, front and back. Now front and back is very easy to define. It's just probably defined best using an enumeration. So I'm going to define an enumeration for it. I'm going to say enum face, and I'm going to say front and back. I think when you have an enumeration like this, since you want to expose three different properties, image, text, and a key, it would be a really neat i think to do that with extensions so you can say extension on face and let's just go ahead and define a, a text for it okay i'm gonna say a string get text which is a getter uh, and then we're gonna switch to this i'm gonna say face front and i'm gonna return front okay and face back i'm gonna say return back just like that okay now, we also need a key. <clears throat> this is not so obvious right now, but I explained a little bit earlier. But for now, a unique key could be the text of the face. So let's say string uh, get key is text. All right, we got a key, a unique key for each one of these faces. And also, we're going to define an image. The image is an asset image. So let's say asset image and let's just call it image and i'm going to switch this again like this and i'm going to say case face front return assets image images front png i'm going to literally just copy paste this i'm going to say back and in here i'm going to say back png as well so i'm going to save it so we get the formatting in place if you go to outline, now you can see the faces there with a the front and back property. And that's pretty much what we needed from our face. It sounds a bit strange when I say it like that. But now I think what would be really good if we went to our homepage and then created a scaffold, because right now it's just looking, yeah, it, it doesn't look like anything. It's just got the debug banner here. Let's go in here and create a scaffold okay and an app bar and then for the app bar let's just create a text for it with a title of text and then i'm going to say animations for instance like that and we have to have a body well we don't have a body yet i'm just going to say text hello world okay this is one of the problems i think when visual studio code can't really it when, when you get errors in the code and you save uh, dark formatter can't really format your code until you press the yeah until you enter the characters needed for it to be able to format your code uh, and i don't really see my 80 character limiter here or delimiter here i think is somewhere past this line it's right here so the simulator is kind of in the way but maybe we could place it like this so and then i'm going to put a 
comma here as well. And you can see our hello world text is appearing right there. Now, what we want to also do is to be able to create a card, which is similar to this. We want this thing. All right. So given a face object, we want to create this card. And I think we could do that by just creating a stateless widget using STL. And I'm just going to call it card view. Okay. So what does card view need? It needs a face. I'm just going to call it like that face. Also, if you noticed, when I tap on this, it changes the face just like that. So it needs a tap handler. And a tap handler is best defined using a void callback. So you can just say void callback. And I'm going to call it untapped. And don't forget, also, you need to create an initializer for all of this. So I'm just going to go and say create a constructor for final fields. And the way I did it, I just went on this error and just press command and dot in Mac to get suggestions what to do. And I say create constructor just like that. Okay. It says these are, this can be nil. So I'm going to make them required. So, so you have to pass them on to the card view or to be happy. I'm going to put a comma here and then press command S to get the rendering a little bit nicer. I really like this style of rendering in Flutter when it goes to like new lines. I'm starting to use this everywhere, even in Xcode. I think it's really nice to break the code down into multiple lines instead of having like really huge lines of code with five parameters. This is a lot cleaner, in my opinion. I guess trying to do hot reload, but it's not really succeeding. I'm going to do a restart here. Let's see if it's going to succeed. Maybe it's because I'm not in that app right now. <laughs> so now, all right, we got the card view, uh, or at least the uh, basics of it. Now, um, let's go to the build method. Um, I think it's a bit difficult to explain how we're going to do it until we actually start with the basics of it. So I think the basics of this card view are uh, that it is built basically out of a how do you say a column maybe it's a column it's like a vertical stack of things so let's just start with a column all right i think that's that's the easy easiest uh, component to begin with here in this column then we're going to create our components and in a column on the main axis i want my components to be in the center of the screen so if you look at a column it's got a main axis alignment and a cross axis alignment in a, in a column. Since all the components have to be laid out vertically, the main axis would be downwards up to, to the down. And then the cross axis on the, on my screen would be then left to right, but we're just going to play with the main axis alignment here. And I'm going to say main axis alignment is main axis alignment center. Okay. Like that. Ooh. What happened here? Oh, I'm in the children of the column, but that's not a good place. Main axis alignment like that. Main axis alignment center like that. All right. Then for the children, I'm going to start with the image. Image of the face and the face is passed on here. So I'm just going to say image just like that. And my image is face image. All right. Let's just hot reload and see what happens. Nothing because we're not rendering a card view. <laughs> That's okay. I want to render a card view in the home page just for now and see what, what happens face front. Oh, we're not passing it untapped. Okay, we can do the untapped. All right. And the key, don't forget the key is very important for animations. Face front key. Uh, string can't be assigned. Oh, because we have to pass on a value key i think we could just say here this is not a final implementation just so you know i just want the card to be rendered on the screen so we can see it as we're designing it and that's one of the beauties of hot reload and flutter you can see your changes as they happen all right that's really good the image is being displayed so if i pass back here i'm going to see the back image if i see front i'm going to see the front image beautiful 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 let's just leave it to the front for now and, and, and again, this is this is going to be removed. I'm going to get rid of this as soon as we're done with the card view. Okay. 
So that's that's for the image. Let's get a text in there. I'm going to say text. Um, and the text is, well, it's going to be face uh, text. Okay. Like that. Boom. Front. But we're going to style this te text quite a lot. Let's go with a font size of 90. <laughs> I said nitty. That's nitty is 90 in Swedish. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, font size. What is it? Uh, the named parameter font size isn't defined. Oh, because, well, I'm not in the style. Of course, we're going to create a style for our text. Okay. Style and it's a text style. And um, font size is going to be 90. All right. Going to save. Good. It's a lot chunkier. I like that. The color, if you remember, it was white. See? white and has a drop shadow i don't know if you can see it but it's got a drop shadow we're gonna get there too let's do a color uh let's see font size 90 and color is gonna be colors white boom <laughs> now we can't see it but it's right there i can see it it's here barely visible as soon as we get the circle around this then we're gonna be able to see it as well Good. And of course, we're going to assign a shadow to it. I really like shadows and text. Pretty much anything with a shadow. It's quite an expensive operation, though, so you don't want to put shadow on everything. The good thing is that our little dart dash image has a shadow already, so we don't have to apply a shadow to that. Uh, and our shadows is an array. And we're going to just create a shadow with an offset, let's say, offset... Uh, of zero and three that's good and let's create a blur radius of maybe three and then a color a colors black let's see how that looks like uh, that's really strong I'm gonna do some formatting here uh, let me bring this here as I said before bring the simulator a bit to the right so we can see the entirety of the code and then I'm gonna enable wrapping because otherwise we can't see what we're typing okay the color is black let's add some opacity to it uh, of maybe half of it yeah that's better that's a bit better right yeah that's a lot cleaner all right now that we have our column um i want to put this column um also ensure that it's always in the center uh let's just command dot on it and then say wrap in center good and then of course well it, it, it's not going to make any difference right now because we have a main axis uh but yeah um and the next thing i want to do is to uh, make sure that we can tap on these the tapping has to also work on this uh little guy uh, but before we get the tapping working, I want to get this little round thing around it, like the, the edges. We want kind of a container that contains all of this. So let's wrap our uh, center, actually, in a container. Um, command dot. Uh, and then I'm going to say wrap with container. Good. Now... The container has to have some decoration to get that kind of nice styling working. So I'm going to say decoration. And let's create a box decoration. Um, for the shape of this box decoration, I'm going to say box shape. And I'm going to use a circle. And for color, I'm going to say colors blue, maybe. Well, that's really strong. Let's say blue 300. Yeah, that's better. Kind of think that's pretty much the color I'm using here. Yeah, that, that's it. Yeah. Um, and that's, let's go create a border for it. Um, let's create a border that's on all sides with a color. I think the color was white here. Yeah, the border is white and I think it's about two uh, points in width. So let's say colors uh, white. And I think the width of two would be enough. Yeah, since now it's white on white, we can't really see the border, but I can see it. 
I know it's there. It's right there. You can see it a little bit. I don't know how I can see it, but I, I see, I feel it. <laughs> I think if we say like a border of, uh, let's say border of 20, then you can see it. It's right there, right? Which is weird, but that means that the background of our view is not pure white because otherwise we shouldn't be able to see white on white. Anyways, let's leave it at two and a comma here to get the styling going. Uh, sorry, here, just like that. All right. Now, I think what we also want to do uh, is to create a shadow as well here because we want to have a shadow for our container. So I'm going to create a box shadow, which is an array of shadows here. I'm going to create a box shadow just like that. And color, we go with maybe the same thing, actually. Oh, I see this one isn't really formatted correctly. I'm going to put a comma here and press save so it gets formatted a little bit nicer. Uh, let's go with the same color as we did here. All right, I'm just going to copy that and bring it over here. Not a black sh box shadow. And press save and see how it looks like. Well, it's not appearing, I think, because we're not spreading it. So let's say a blur radius of mm, 50 maybe and a spread radius of two maybe is that is that it kind of actually yeah let's leave it like that i think it's very close right it's pretty much it i think yeah and then i'm gonna put a comma here boom like that well the card is taking shape the only thing i think is missing is the gesture recognizer command dot on the container wrap with widget gesture recognizer just like that <clears throat> Actually, sorry gesture recognizers in um, ios sdk gesture detector like that and i'm gonna say on tap and then i'm gonna pass on tapped just like that all right now i'm gonna put a print statement here and just see if we're getting the tap events like that command s command shift uh, y sorry i have to sometimes look at my keyboard still now i have this big microphone in my face so <laughs> um now right i'm gonna tap on it and you can see the tap events are getting here and this is one of the things i really love about flutter and this is one of the reasons i think flutter is so well thought out i mean who thought about this i'm like since it's the same event being printed to the screen consecutively like this it just prints the number of times it's being printed it doesn't print 16 times it just says 16 times flutter tapped beautiful i mean so many years after xcode has been released and we still don't have features like this so well thought out this is really good stuff anyways i'm running now um that was the card view now what we also need to do is to go and create these cards in our home page all right i'm gonna say um i'm gonna say late final um card view front widget and i'm gonna do the copy paste this uh, sorry not car view card view and then i'm gonna say um back widget like that and now it's our responsibility in the init state of our homepage widget to create instances of this card widget and assign them to the front widget and the back widget so i'm going to overwrite the init state and then i'm going to say front widget is a card widget with ooh, what was that card widget uh didn't we call it card widget card view all right card view should we change it to card widget because i keep calling it widget maybe that's that's a sign i'm gonna go on there and i'm gonna press f2 and i'm gonna call it widget like that card widget okay now i don't have to make a mistake again well the key for the front widget is gonna be face front key right <clears throat> i'm so sorry about that um i apologize to your ear as well uh for the face i'm gonna say face front 
and on tapped we're just gonna leave it empty for now okay just like that uh here we're gonna say uh, for this as we sit down there we should say a value key boom all right that's the front widget now i'm gonna say um print no maybe we should leave that empty i'm not gonna complicate it let's just leave it empty i'm just gonna copy paste this and create the back widget as well let's just say back widget and this one passes the back face and then the face is also back here so for both the key and for the actual face we're gonna pass face dot back okay now that we've created those uh, we're actually go we're gonna go and create a little boolean value here and this boolean value is gonna define whether right now we're showing uh, the front or the back widgets is going to be it's going to be quite important when you're going to switch these widgets for you to know whether you're showing the front or the back um, and you will see the reason later but if you imagine um, that you have an image on in front of you uh, for the front widget and then here's the back widget behind it for instance if you like rotate them as we do when you end up with the back widget then the back widget's actually going to be rotated on its y-axis like this so instead of reading back is going to read kasab you know what i mean because it's rotated in the middle just like the front widget for the front widget it's completely fine because it's going to go out of view if you can see here you can see the front widget is fine it just rotates you don't see it anymore but when the back widget appears on the screen, you need to rotate it one more time, uh, as you will see later. So it's important for you to know whether you're on the front widget or the back widget, right? <coughs> I'm sorry about that again. Uh, so I'm going to go and say, uh, let's create this bool value for us. I'm going to say is showing mm, front. I'm going to say true because we're going to start with true now um we have the card widgets we have our build function in the home page then we need to create um a function that gives us a widget to display on the screen based on our settings so at the at the moment in the build function of my scaffold uh, of, of my home page i'm just creating a scaffold and just returning a card widget that's that's not really what we want we want we want some sort of widget that is able to animate the, and do the animation for us the card widget isn't going to be able to do the animation for us so we have to do it somehow so i'm going to go in here and create a function uh, and i'm going to say switcher widget just like this okay I'm gonna get this card widget right now, dump it in there, and put a semicolon here. And for the body, I'm just gonna say switch your widget. All right. And return this card widget for now. The result is gonna be exactly the same. It's just I've moved the responsibility of creating the widget displaying on screen from the body in the build function to the switcher widget. All right now one of the things that you need to know is that there is a great widget in flutter and that is called tween animation builder uh, it works kind of like this that it takes in a tween animation which you're going to see how to use soon and uh, this tween animation it's just an animation that has it's just an object that defines the start of an animation and an end of an animation in terms of a value uh, using a double value to represent its animation so um, you can also provide it with a duration and a curve and you also will then be able to get a chance to return the widget that has to be displayed on the screen for every point of this animation so the tween animation builder takes your animation for instance in this case for us if it goes from zero to one in one point in time whatever those units mean for for your application then it's gonna say okay you're gonna go from zero to one 
then it's going to look at the number of frames per second that have to be rendered on that particular device on a particular uh, on a normal ios device you have this on most phones at least you have 60 frames per second but you have like for instance uh one plus one plus pro devices for uh on android that they have like a dynamic uh, refresh rate of 120 sometimes it can go like an ipad as well so this this animation builder is going to take that tween start and end and then say okay i'm going to have to run this animation on this device how many frames per second what should i do how many times should i call your animation builder for you to provide a widget for me so look at it as kind of like a widget provider uh, during your animation that's that's the best way i can explain it for now so um, let's just go ahead and return a, a tween animation builder and as you can see it says give me a tween give me a duration give me a builder uh, for the tween um this is an important one because we have to say a tween object with a begin of zero and if we are already showing uh let's say don't we have that is showing yeah it's showing front and then we don't do a tween Otherwise, we go and return pi here. Oh, I, I switched these for the turning operator. Uh, like that. Okay. Uh, dark math. Yeah, import that. So we get pi. Okay, that's for the tween. So that's basically where we're going from 0 to pi if we're showing the back. Okay. For the duration, I think uh, duration one second is going to be enough seconds one and for the builder i really like for, for the builders because i sometimes forget what kind of signature they have i just delete the this name and then i press command space on the mac and then i get like a suggestion on how to build a builder so like that okay and a semicolon here and in your builder you have to return your widget to be rendered now this value if you don't i think if you don't provide a data type for it it's going to be dynamic like if you type value Oh, it's just object, but you know that is this tween, and you provide a double to it. So you just give it a double signature here, and for the entirety of this function, then value is going to be double. So you don't have to typecast it. Okay. Um. Now, one of the really tricky things to know about uh, the tween animation builder is that if you simply think about like okay it gives you a child but what is this child what do you have to return from this well hmm, why does it even give you a chance to return a widget from this function well the reason it gives you a chance to return a, a builder is that it gives you a value and it says okay here's a value given this value what should i render on the screen if you simply say okay render the backside return the back of your widget as soon as this builder is called, the back uh, card is going to be displayed. That's not what you want. The meaning of all of this to create the tween animation builder and then creating the tween is for you to get the value and depending on the value, return the relevant widget to be animated to the screen. This was like the thing for me that I didn't get about tween animation builder. I'm a little slow with stuff like this. I've always been slow with this type of thinking, even at school. So... I think is important to understand that um and here you have to kind of make a decision if you if it's time for you to display the back face and you can simply do it like this you can say uh for instance final is showing back and um and then you can say if we're in half in half transition because this is the front is rotating for on your side is rotating like this as soon as it's here you want to return a back widget right because the entirety of the animation is one is 180 degrees rotation like this actually wait a minute the yeah it's 180 degrees right so in the middle of this 180 degrees or pi divided by two you want to return the back widget 
right? So here, here is front, 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 front. As soon as you hit here, you want to return the back widget. So you basically go, is the value more than pi divided by two? Well, then I'm showing the back widget, right? That's that's simple maths. Then you also have to make a decision what to display. So then you say to display, am I showing the front widget, for instance, uh, then let's see, or maybe let's just use a showing back widget because the front widget thing, the front widget is showing front widget. We're going to flip that in the untapped. So it's nothing that we want to use during the animation because the animation is dependent on this value of the tween. So if I say, for instance, is showing front, this is a Boolean that's going to be changed in the set state is, is like a dun, dun. It, it, it has no relevancy to the animation. So I can't use that. My decision on what to return has to be dependent on my tween, which I get its value in my tween, tween animation builder. Did I say twin? tween tween right so i'm not going to use is showing front i'm going to use is showing back which i built here okay then i say back widget uh or did i yeah back widget otherwise front widget like that all right now a really cool widget <laughs> that i didn't know embarrassingly in flutter is called transform and transform, I think, is actually a stateless widget. If I go there, command and single child render object widget, which in the end, render object widget is a widget. <laughs> okay, it's just a widget. All right, I don't even know if it's a stateless state. It should be stateless. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't get it. But anyways, it is a is a widget. Uh, transform allows you to transform. Uh, an object, scale it, rotate it, uh, and also transform it to basically move it. Uh, but in this case, we're just going to use it for rotation. So let's just return from our function in the builder a transform. Okay. As you can see, it needs a transform uh, parameter. Uh, and I'm going to say, okay, for the transform, uh, use a matrix for identity and use our operator here to scale I, because I, I don't really like this the fact that this object is too big I, I think it's like to appreciate the, the 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 shadow around it you kind of need to scale it down so I want to scale it um, let's say by half I think is too small I think half would be way too small uh, let's say 07 or something. I think it's 07. And then for X and Y, use the scaling of 07. And then I'm going to rotate it as well across its Y axis using what? The value. That's that's the important thing. The value is given to us in the tween animation builder's builder function, which comes from our tween. So very important. That's for the transform uh parameter uh, for the alignment because if you if you don't provide an alignment to your tra trans uh what's it called transform i want to say transfer but it's called transform um if you don't provide uh, an alignment for it you can you may be able to see like the front widget here and then when when you rotate it then the back widget kind of goes like this like it completely can change its positioning because you didn't give it an alignment where to keep the core of all the objects that it's like rotating and doing scaling stuff with so you need to provide alignment so i'm going to just say alignment center and then this is one of the, also the tricky things for transform for the child you now have the ability just to say to display but you're going to see that if you just say it to display here, then you're going to get problems. And I'm going to just save this and just show you this problem. Front widget has not been initialized. Really? Oh, we have to just restart. Okay, that's the front. The scaling is good, I think. That's really good. 
I'm just going to leave this code like this so you can see the problem later. And the thing that's missing is that you can see the taps aren't working because we're not doing anything in here, right? When the front widget is tapped, I'm going to switch the is showing front property here so that it triggers a re-render basically of our widget, of our home page. And I'm going to say is showing front is false, but in a set state, all right? And for these short set states, I like to use this kind of uh, syntax instead of going through doing like this. You could also do it like this. There's nothing wrong with that. But I think when it's just one line of code, it makes a lot more sense to do it like this. Um, kind of like you do in JavaScript as well. And on this untapped as well, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to say untapped. Uh, set state, doom, 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 like this. I'm going to say is showing front when the back button, when the back face is tapped, then you are going to show the front. So you're just going to say is showing front is true, like this. And I'm going to save it just to be sure. I'm going to restart it. And you can see what happens here. Whoop. Do you see what's happening to the back card? <laughs> it's really funny. It's, it's the thing that I explained to you in the beginning is when the back appears on the screen, it's got the wrong rotation. Do you see? Whoop. Whoop. It's rotated incorrectly. And you may think, well, it's buggy. And you'd be right. <laughs> but there is nothing wrong with the tween. And there is nothing wrong with your animation. You shouldn't like write this. The, the, the key here is that you have to embed that the back card in another transform so you would just create another transform as the child of your transform here and for its transform for its align and make sure that you do the alignment because this this has really messed me up before um you know actually let's let's not do the alignment i just want you to see what happens if you don't do the alignment that's very important and for the transform what we do is we say a matrix for and rotation y and if we're showing the back then a pi is a good angle to rotate around so because we've rotated back already by pi boom like this if we rotate it one like this then you're going to actually see the text correctly otherwise don't do any rotation here okay and don't forget the child of this inner transform has to actually be the child that you want to render, which is your two display, right? Good. Okay, I'm going to restart this. Beautiful. Look at the front. Do you see it? This works perfectly. <laughs> but as soon as you tap on it, whoop. Ooh, what happened there? It's because it's a transform within a transform. So you have to make sure that all the transforms are like ro are revolving around the same core point and that's where the alignment comes in and you have to say alignment center just like that i'm going to restart just so you see the whole animation from the beginning front tap on it back front back well that's great i think this is a bit more like <clears throat> is is a linear animation and the thing that we're missing is a curve in our tween animation builder and you would do this by just going to curve and then we say curves and then you would say linear to ease out for instance and i think that's, that's a lot softer to look at and a lot more pleasant Ooh, like this you see I find it to be a lot more pleasant to look at, but that's just maybe me. You can just clean this up and then maybe add another one. I don't know, ease in expo. I have no idea what that is. You have to read the documentation for it, to be honest with you. I'm not even going to pretend like I know. Ooh. Oh, no. Mm, well, it's something. Um, but anyways, I think linear to ease out is a lot more easier on the eyes. So yeah, I think we're done. That was it. Um, you may be able to clean this up a little bit by maybe removing these, for instance, transforms into their own widgets because transform is a widget. So you can literally just command dot on it. Ooh, where's my keyboard? Command dot and say extract widget. 
uh, you're more than welcome to do that. But I think this basically kind of explains the idea behind what we were trying to do in this application. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. And uh, if you have any questions, any comments, do let me know. I really enjoy reading your comments and your feedback. So thank you.